but yeah. Hi, I'm Susan Fair Forrest, and um, it's not really a question. I'd just like to really quickly teach a chant to the audience: "The Earth is our mother; we must take care of her." Mm. Could I do that? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Microphone. Just repeat after me. Hey, yana ho, yana hey, yan yan. Hey, yana ho, yana hey, yan yan. The earth is our mother. We must take care of her. The earth is our mother. We must take care of her. The earth is our mother. We must take care of her. The earth is our mother. We must take care of her. The sacred ground we walk upon with every step we take. The sacred ground we walk upon with every step we take. The sacred ground we walk upon with every step we take. The sacred ground we walk upon with every step we take. Hey, yana ho, yana hey, yan yan. Hey, yana ho, yana hey, yan yan. The earth is our mother. She will take care of us. The earth is our mother. She will take care of us. Thank you. I'd like to flip it on its head. I do, do, do. I, I really, uh, I really uh, wanted to ask you about um, what it would be like to get across this argument that there's a cultural connection we have to the environment and that those of us who may feel uh, national pride, a little enthusiastic one, a very enthusiastic uh, cultural identity, a very uh, great sense of belonging in our community. How can we get that across to those who feel that, but seem to not have any kind of a connection to the environment around us? How, how can you how can you coincide to uh, care about the indigenous love and other kinds of uh, national pride? Yeah, thank you. Good That's a great question. Um, you know, and I, I think it's definitely something that a lot of people struggle with because I think that it's, you know, it's kind of like if you get it, you get it, and if you don't, you don't. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of philosophies about, uh, well, uh, this is just something I had a conversation with the other day with somebody about the emerging research around uh, psilocybin and medical mushrooms and their ability to uh, treat depression. But another thing that's coming out in the research is that uh, these experiences also um, imbue this, this connection to the environment to people. Um, and so I think that it's, you know, it, it it does kind of take like a spiritual revelation or some sort of, you know, experience in nature that that if you don't feel that already, that that's almost what it takes. Yes. Which reminds me of uh, uh, Richard Liu's book, uh, Saving Our Children from Nature Deficit Disorder. I know in Florida, for example, uh, fishing licenses are down, hunting, you know, the, and in, in, you know, several generations ago, individuals who are probably today even still socially conservative when fishing with their kids, you know, whatever, now they're off the soccer fields and, and, and so forth. They've got their attachment to nature is a, is a much different kind of nature, but um, so part of it is just, you know, and, and Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, they, that was the way in which so many people discovered their relationship to nature. So I think that's an evidence back. And, and the other thing is, and I want to, I'm following with the lead of our um, great chanter here. But before I um, retired from Santa Fe College, I teamed up with our drama uh, instructor uh, and we revisited uh, the play at Oedipus. 
um, as an allegory for, for the plagues that we're now currently experiencing. For it's called Oedipus and Egetuchnia. <laughs> the, uh, the, the entire um, chorus section, which was done by our college chorus, was done in rap. <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever saw this production. We only had a couple of awesome. <laughs> um, uh, But it, it involved the dance department. But what the part of the research for that had me going back to ancient Greek myth. And, uh, this, and, and it turned out that some of these myths had to do with like sacred springs. Uh, yeah. It had to do with the fact mm -hmm. that if you violated these springs, you could bring on a plague. Yeah. And it wasn't very hard to transpose this to Florida. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know what the experience was. Of the, I know the kids that were in the play were certainly moved by it. And I don't know, I can't speak for the audience. But, but it does seem to me that I know John with the photography, the arts, it seems to me is another way of um, of doing that, and, and there's something powerful about drama because it's happening live, you know, in the body of people around you. Um, if anybody would like uh, to uh, take this play and, you know, and adapt it to your own uh, local pitch of uh, I'd be happy to just, you know, give you a copy at no cost. I don't have any uh, any uh, relationship to it other than that it sits in a desk at home and it's only been produced once. Um, no, sadly, we didn't get a very good video documentation, and it was really, really stunning. I mean, the, I got to say, the theater department in Santa Fe had an amazing production, and it sort of, it sort of hurts that we didn't do a better job of documenting the experience. So I got a note that we have to stop now, so I'll, I'll be available if anybody wants to talk later. I did just really quickly want to mention one other thing. It's like, we do have to remember that even as Europeans, we were colonized at some point. Yes. So, you know, a lot of us trace it back far enough, and we were tribal people also until Rome and the Catholic Church came through. So. <laughs>